welcome and thank you for darn near, near filling the room for this uh, FTC guest author series event featuring Christopher Moore. I'm Henry Markham from the FTC English Department. I teach creative writing here. Uh, and to start the evening off, I just want to thank my Oscar speech. I want to thank the people who really made this evening possible. Some fine folks in the Humanities Division office, Michelle Brock and Rosa Arroyo. Humanities Division Chair, Diane Boynt. Um, a fine woman named Jeanette Haxton, who produces all of our promotional materials on top of everything else the college has her doing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming novelist Christopher Moore. Can you hear me? Oh. <laughs> Matt. Thanks, Henry. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Did anybody drive from far? I know you did. And I know you guys did. And, well, I mean, uh, I'm not just looking at your hands and going, I just... I, I, I'm talking to you. you know, I'm always going to go, home. liar. Um, well, whenever I talk to people, it's about a book that just came out, and I go, just talk about that book, and so here, I, you know, I have a book out, so I didn't know what I was going to talk about. Still don't. Um, <laughs> but I was going to, I thought, well, I'm going to be talking at a college, and so, you know, it's going to be college people. And I, I thought, well, you know, I, I could do that commencement speech that I never get to do because nobody asks me. <laughs> um, actually, I got asked one time, I was living in, in Kauai, and I got asked way in advance to do the commencement for the, like, um, um, I forget, it's this town with a lot of vowels in it, um, <laughs> um, to do the commencement for their high school. And before the thing came up, I was down at the beach at Hanalei Bay. Hanalei Bay is sort of the platonic ideal of a tropical island bay and it's got a pier going out to it. It's actually where they used to film the plane landing on Fantasy Island. And so I was sort of trying to learn how to surf in my big middle-aged dumb white guy way. And all of a sudden all these young people came up down the pier and jumped off and were in, and I was like, and there was about 60 of them, and sort of, I'm in the water with all of them, and they're doing watery things, and I'm waiting for a wave that's, you know, wussy enough for me to get on. And I, and I said, what's going on here? And, and this girl goes, oh, we're in class. I said, this is a class. And she said, yeah, this is, you know, like fifth period or something like that. And I was like, so what am I going to say to the graduating class of Kapa'a High? Okay. Took me till I was almost 50 to get here. Um, so if you work really hard in Cleveland, <laughs> Someday you'll be where you were when you were a sophomore in high school. So anyway, I, I, I canceled on him um, and didn't give that. I, just, I didn't, what was I going to say to him? You know, I was like, well, this is where you want to end up. And that's consequently you get a lot of really profoundly stupid people in Hawaii. Um, is anybody here from Hawaii? <laughs> then you know, right? That's what you thought. There's no place in the world when you watch the news in Hawaii and they do the man on the street, you're going, oh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, him barely get up in that fire burn and him house and I, you know, and you're like, the fuck? <laughs> so glad to get back to California where there was like, they would talk to man on, people, the man on the street and you'd go, oh, wow, they're smart. Um, so anyway, I, was, I thought that's what it was going to be. And then my friend Craig Johnson was speaking at University of Tucson. And, and, I, and there was a picture of him speaking at University, I think it's uh, Arizona State at Tucson or something like that. Is that what it is? I guess not. Anyway, so I look at the picture of the audience and there is no one. Craig writes um, the series of novels that Longmire is made from, the TV show that's on TNT. And, um, and there is not a single person, there was a crowd about this size, no one under 70. No one. <laughs> 
Um, and no offense to the people here over 70, you know, thank you. Uh, but there was, it, it, it just looked, it just looked like a hospice waiting room. And, uh, but, you know, it might, they might not have, you know, it's dry in Tucson, you know. So maybe if they had just, if Craig had like passed out some, you know, moisturizer, they would have been like you guys. But, so anyway, I thought, okay, well I can't do my, as, as you make your path into life speech, because, that's not who you're going to be. And here, look at you. You're, you know, we have no demographics, so um, I can't, uh, I can't do that speech. So we're just talking about stuff. Uh, uh, well, I don't talk to anybody for, you know, like 18 months at a time. So this is, you know, like you probably going about your day-to-day -day life. You talk to this about this many people, you know, maybe a week. This is. I, I just, I, I talked to all of you guys, and then for 18 months I don't talk to anybody. So, you know, except Charlie, um, who I live with, so I kind of have to. She looks cranky. Um, so, yeah, I was going to talk about that. I have notes. I'm looking at it, they say nothing. <laughs> oh, I know what we'll do. Um, I could look some, at some, look, you're pretty alert. I need two of these. Um, um, we'll use Evan. Uh, to make him feel special. Um, there's going to be a point where I'm going to go, what was I talking about? And Because I'm going to have digressed, and you're going to be like, there was a point in the first place, but you're going to pay close enough attention to go, oh, whales, and I'm going to go, oh, thank you. And it's going to be your job to pay attention to whatever Evan didn't catch. So Because I'm going to go, what was I talking about? And Evan's going to be like, I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking about weed. Um, <laughs> So anyway, you guys are my designated memory people. Um, so that way I don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that happened. Uh, I just wrote the man in the red hat. Oh, I know what that means. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so some of you, has anybody heard me speak before at a book signing or anything like that? Yes. Oh, not that many, so I can totally lie to you guys. Um, <laughs> don't call me on it if you've heard this before. Uh, I've also never seen other writers speak in a non sort of, in a non how-to format. So I'll just sort of talk about what happened to me. So, you know, how I got to be, I've written a whole bunch of books. Um, Henry was right, he's the first person that's ever got the count right. There's 13 in print, 14, The Serpent of Venice will come out next April. It's already finished, but um, the publisher wanted to be mean to you guys, so they're like, no, we're not gonna put it out. <laughs> Suffer, bitches. So. Uh -huh. I have no idea why that is. She asked me why. Is, um, is there a delay? They used to act like it was magic, like typesetting was, you know, there were, Four monks with you know, <laughs> pouring lead in, in a you know in a monastery to set up type, and we all know that's not the case, right? You can sort of do that at home, and when you point that out to them, they're really cranky. Uh, you know, I first started. I published my first book in 1992, and and they used to pull that stuff on you all the time, like, oh, there's mystical things going on. There's not mystical things going on. I know how to do this stuff at home, so I don't know why. I turned it in in January of this year, and it's not going to come out until next year in April. I just, I really don't know. I just don't know. I, I, no, I think they're just being dead. Um, so, anyway, that happened. They made me take my giant's hat off, so I'm still all naked in front of the I'm insecure about my physicality. <laughs> I want, I want to uh, come back in the next life as Angel Pagan. <laughs> I mean, not, not, I mean, not the, because not at the same time, because that would freak him out. <laughs> Be a bat, and all of a sudden, boom! I am a white guy. <laughs> I don't know how to hit a baseball, and I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> I just want to look like Angel Pagan. So I get that out of my head away. Um, it's a helpful hint. Uh, you know, you can just Google Waldo. Um, 
I don't want you to have gone away from this uh, without anything useful. So. So I type in, where the fuck is he? Uh, <laughs> The, the weirdest thing about, I mean, we had some a writing crafty thing today, and the weirdest thing about when you're learning to write is everybody says, write what you know, write what you know, write what you know. It's, it's, I think it goes back to Hemingway, and him, you know, he couldn't, you know, it's like, oh, I would really love to write about a bullfighter, but I can't do it unless I'm gored by a bull, which is profoundly stupid. Um, <laughs> but they keep telling you that, and, and I don't know anything. I, when, it, when I started, I didn't know anything, and I don't know anything now. And, the older I get, the less I, I, the more I realize how much I don't know. That's basically it. So, so that's bullshit. Don't believe the right what you know. They, they, but you can go learn stuff. And and I, and I did take that to heart when I was writing my first book. I was working like four jobs in Cambria. You guys all know where that is because of where you're. And and I was, I thought, well, I'll, I'll write a book about what I know, which is this little town. And there's a book called The Circus of Dr. Lau. It was written in the 30s, 20s or 30s. I can't remember the author's name. Do you remember the author's name? It's a great book, and it's there's a, and it's about a circus that comes to town, and sort of shakes things up, and they're talking about the town, the woman, and this woman in the town, and the line is, and every tomorrow was going to be, she knew every tomorrow was going to be exactly like yesterday, and that was sort of what Cabrio was like, <laughs> is that every tomorrow was going to be like yesterday, and so as a novelist, I thought, well, you got to shape that up. You got to change something. You got to introduce something to that, um, to that little town where everybody expects tomorrow to be like yesterday. Um, and I thought, well, I'll just put a monster there. <laughs> um, and um, when I was a kid, and I and I wanted to write, and I was I was sort of doing all the suffering teenage angst that that you do when you think you're going to be creative, you know, and then you later on discover. Alcohol or sex or both, and then you're like, I'm fine. Um, but uh, when I was a kid, I used to like drive around in my beat up Chevy late at night, you know, just with my jaw gritted. You know, if I'd been in England, I would have been staring out over the moors, but since I was in central Ohio, I was just driving around in the weather, uh, listening to Springsteen, you know, talk about my life um, on the A track. And I used to get stopped by the cops a lot because I was suspicious. Um, I wasn't drinking or smoking dope or anything, I was just out late driving around, my jaw clenched. You know? uh, and they would search my car constantly. They would search my, they'd tear, they'd tear the seats out and everything. And, and, and it was like, well, go about your, and I was, it would piss me off because they never found anything. I wasn't doing anything, but they would always sort of rifle through my car even after the McMuffin Ravers got up to the top of the back seat. And, um, and I thought it'd be so cool if I had, if I could say, don't reach under the seat, and they'd be, why not? And I'd say, because there's a big monster under there. <laughs> and you can't see him. <laughs> but if you reach under there, he'll eat you. <laughs> so when I decided I was gonna have a monster come to Cambria, to this little town that I renamed Pine Cove, that's the monster I decided to use, was the one that you couldn't see, but you really don't want to reach in there. And in practical demon keeping, um, that's, that's sort of how that story takes off, is, is the, this guy driving around in this beat up Chevy with this monster that's pretty much invisible to everybody else, except when he's eating. And so I wrote that book and um, sent it off and nothing happened. <laughs> and now I'm waiting tables at Olive Garden. It's kind of sad. No, that's not what happened. <laughs>